Get the little ones, sit back, relax, and listen to the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Get ready. What you're about to hear is a lost episode of Crimson Garnet. Redone, re-recorded by our new Crimson Garnet himself. Crimson Garnet, copyright 2000 to 2018, Nathaniel Dwayne Caldwell. Produced by Jimmy David Robbins. Dwayne Bronze, Crimson Garnet, and other names, characters, and events found herein are trademarks of Nathan Caldwell and are purely fictional. Any resemblance to these to any other person, place, or event, real or fictitious, are purely coincidental. Of all the things in life that are important, God ranks number one. But family, that is a close second. Our story starts in present day in Seattle, Washington. We begin at Seattle University. Crimson Garnet, episode number one, Bronze and Lead, by Nathaniel D. Caldwell. Read by the new voice of the Crimson Garnet himself, Jimmy David Robbins. I did what you told me, coach. A burly young man walks by and delivers the message he was instructed to bring. Well done, the coach James Led responded. I'll see you at the game. Coach Led, the voice came from the front doors. Great job on the game. Why, thank you, sir, he said. We try our hardest to win at any cost. That he did, for as he opened his cabinet at home, he spoke as he held a bottle of blue pills. Good job, old friend, but I'm down to only four bottles. Well, Mr. Bronze, it's all here. Room 315. Thanks a lot, Dwayne Bronze told the registrar. I'm always here to help, she said. Dwayne Bronze had finally started college. Like many other students, he felt like high school would never end. Now, he was on his own in the great big world. A graduate of Seattle High, he received many honors, as well as a full scholarship to Seattle University. He was ready to take on the task, but he was a little anxious. He was about to come up to his door when he heard yelling come out of 314. I don't care what you do. No bucks, no drugs. You got that? Good. Dwayne couldn't believe his ears. He opened the door to his room. Anyone in here? Come on in, a young man said. I'm just resting. You my roommate? Yeah. Are you new here too? Sure am. I was told the college was only in its second year. When you think about it, I guess that means that everyone's new here. I guess, Dwayne laid down on his bed. I need to rest. I have a lot to think about. His roommate showed concern. What's wrong? You can tell me. We are roommates after all. No thanks. I'm just going to rest and think. I'll be all right. Okay. But if you need anything, just call the desk and have me paged. I'll come a-running. Thanks. Uh, Mark. Mark Skies. And with that, he saluted and left the room. About two minutes later, there was a knock at the door. Come on in, he said. It's open. The door opened, and an older man peeked his head in. I'm told that there's a bronze in here. Dwayne Bronze, what can I do for you? I'll bring a visitor. All of a sudden, a young lady stepped into the room, and the door closed. Dwayne sat up in his bed and struggled to his feet. Uh, what can I do for you, ma'am? He reached out to take her hand. Lightning, she said. Don't you remember me? Dwayne struggled to think. She seemed so familiar. Did she just call me Lightning? He thought. That's what my sister used to call me. But wasn't she lost during the late 80s? Lightning, are you okay? She asked, interrupting his thoughts. Uh, sure. You seem to be thinking about something. What's wrong? Nothing. Why haven't I seen you? I thought you were dead. I sent a letter. I don't understand why you didn't get it. When she sat down in a chair, he did the same. I had gone to Europe on a very important trip. It seemed a member of our family lived there. Well, Debbie, I'm glad to see you in one piece, he hugged her. So what are you doing now? Trying to find you. Then trying to find a job. Hey, don't you want to know who I found? Oh, let me try again. Hey, sis, what did you find in Europe? That's better, she smiled. 
I found two things, actually. I found our grandfather and this. She held out a seemingly ordinary ring. You said you found Grandpa? Yeah. You saw him just a while ago. That guy? You're kidding. I mean, it's weird to see him and not know. I felt the same way. There was a knock at the door. The two's grandfather stuck his head in again. Come on, Deb. We've got places to go. Oh, how I wish we didn't, he thought. Hold on, Dwayne shouted as the door shut. He stepped outside. Hey, Deb. Shh, his grandfather said. It was then that Dwayne heard the same terrible voice from 314. Four bottles of the stuff? Done. Then all was silent once more. What did you hear? Dwayne asked. His grandfather responded. It's a drug deal, Dwayne. I know. How? I heard earlier. What do we do now? Debbie asked, concerned. Then Matthew Bronze began constructing a plan. Simple. We tell the authorities. Give them an anonymous tip. One thing's for sure, though. We've got to stick together until this is over. Dwayne had to say it. He couldn't help it. It fluttered over him above all other concerns and emotions. Hey, we need to stick together all the time. Right, Matthew said. Honey, he said to Debbie, give him the ring. Debbie held out the ring she'd shown him earlier, but Dwayne just stared at her, puzzled. I... I don't understand, he said. Just take it, Lightning, she smiled at him. You'll understand. As Dwayne put the ring on his finger, it gave him a terrible shock. Ow, he said. That's some static. The ring was a beautiful sight. That wasn't static, his grandfather said. And this isn't an ordinary ring. The ring is a sophisticated piece of technological machinery. I'll show you what I mean. Press the stone, the garnet, and lift it up. Dwayne seemed a bit puzzled, but he did as his grandfather told him. What he saw amazed him. Main power circuits connected the ring to a small main circuit board. All four corners of the inside main circuit board had solar panels. In the center was a speaker microphone. It was unlike anything he'd ever seen before. I still don't quite understand, he said. Well, Matthew started, several years ago, I went to another college. Class was about to end. And finally, remember this war. My teacher, Mr. Trent, started when he was interrupted by the intercom. Mr. Trent, please come to the office ASAP. Mr. Trent, please come to the office ASAP. Class dismissed. We all left class, but as I passed the office, I overheard something. It was the dean of the college. You can't go online to the school, Trent. Hours later, the dean was found in shock. He wouldn't listen, he said. I warned him, but he just would not listen. I know. An assisting officer said, let's just go. Later, I overheard just why he was found in that state. <laughs> Man, we scared him so bad, I heard someone say. He may never be sane again, Mr. Trent. Those clubs were a great idea. They had used clubs on him. No wonder he was in such shock. He had been tangling with violent men. I never knew that college could be such a dangerous place. It was then that I decided to create an item that would work in self-defense. I was a student in electronics, so I knew the ins and outs of circuitry, hardware, etc. I decided to create a device with solar power and voice command capabilities. I wanted to create something that I knew would work. But how would I carry this piece of equipment around? That's when I realized. My ring. I've been wearing it for years. I hollowed it out, put a hinge on the stone, and there you go. Where are we going, anyway? Dwayne asked while they were walking down the outside walk to his grandfather's truck. The one place I haven't been yet, Matthew responded. I only hope everything's still there. When they finally reached the place, Dwayne and Debbie waited at the door while Matthew went in. Until they heard him yell, they rushed in. Grandpa, are you all right? Dwayne yelled. It works, he said. They cleaned up the room and unpacked some camping equipment. While his sister was sleeping, Dwayne watched his grandfather call up some very old records. You see, Dwayne, he said, 
these are all of my records on the ring. That's great, but how can we stop that dealer? Be patient. When the time comes, you'll know it. When morning came, the group headed out. They went to David's apartment for a final provision. I didn't stop at making this ring a defense item, Matthew said. I wanted to make a difference. Now you can too. He opened his old trunk. There was a full blue suit with white stripes down the side. It had red boots and a yellow belt. With this suit, Dwayne's grandfather continued, you can keep who you are a secret. That way, if you stop someone, they won't know who to get back at. But where's the mask? I did some work on that, Debbie interrupted as she entered the room. I decided to give you this old SWAT helmet LAPD gave me when I left the force. I didn't know you were in the LAPD, Dwayne added, shocked. I'm sorry. I still can't figure how you didn't get those letters. Anyway, I reworked the helmet, covered the mic with a special insulated cover, and gave it all a paint job to match the suit. Ingenious, Matthew exclaimed. I get it from my grandfather, she smiled. Here's the last of it, Mr. Led, the trucker said. That's great, James Led responded. Put that over by the others. Finally, he thought, more supply. Dwayne Braun saw the bags of drugs over on the corner of the building. Bingo, he said. His grandfather replied on the headset. Okay, Dwayne. To activate the ring, raise it to the sun and call, guard it. Though a strange request, Dwayne had learned to trust his grandfather. He raised his ring to the sky and yelled, Darn it! Then, something seemingly miraculous happened. Lightning struck his ring, but he wasn't hurt in the least. On the contrary, Dwayne felt the adrenaline flowing through his body as never before. He gained tremendous energy. What next? he thought. He waited just a moment. Looks like rain, Dwayne heard the trucker say. Never mind that, the malevolent coach responded. Now we sell for even higher prices. Then Dwayne knew he had his chance. Over my dead body, he said. That can be arranged, the evil man exclaimed. Get him! Suddenly, two more guards ran out of the truck that had once carried the toxic merchandise. All three drew their guns, but before they had a chance to fire... Dwayne ran and knocked the gun out of every single guard. They were confounded, but so was Dwayne. How could I be running so fast? He thought. In less than two seconds, he had knocked the guns out of all the men and found himself staring the coach down. He kept his cool. Come with me, he said. Ugh, sure. James Led couldn't think straight. He didn't have the mind to continue his evil now not after being so confused by this unreal crusader. Before long, James Led was behind bars. How did you do it? How did you find out about this deal? The police sergeant was amazed. Someone who worked for him was overheard talking in a phone conversation. The costume Dwayne answered. There's a reward in it for you if you just give me your name. No! Matthew's voice came booming over the mic. Dwayne responded to the officer. I'm sorry. I don't need a reward. Just say... He looked down at his ring. Say that a garnet apprehended the criminal. The end. Or is it? Music by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com and is under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Sound effects by freesound.org and is under a Creative Commons 1.0 license. This has been a Protectorate production. Thanks for listening. If you want a huge selection of audio drama, some of the newest ones out there as they come out, then do find Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network, which is the new home of the Sonic Society, the world's longest-running, largest showcase of modern audio drama. You can find us on the Sunday Showcase feed, or if you want to hear all of the day's worth of audio, then you can find it on the main Mutual Audio Network feed, wherever you get your podcasts. The Mutual Audio Network.
listening and imagining together.